really came prepared to practice today. Um, I really felt like we were in good physical condition, and that's a tribute to Ivan Lewis and our strength and conditioning staff. I mean, like you said, you know, we ran 130 plays in practice today, but we also ran uh, another 80 or some odd so in the walkthrough earlier today. And so that, that's, a, that's a good chunk of plays, and, and that's not to mention our teach periods and different things. And so that was really encouraging, and I thought mentally our guys were, were, were much better this time around for a first practice and maybe we were in the spring. Um, you know, I thought they responded better than when, when fatigue kicked in. Um, I thought they were, they were obviously more prepared. They knew what to expect and um, it was good. It was good, you know. You know I think that uh, they won the books and some other thoughts on that. Um, some other issues you guys probably noticed, Kevon Seymour was not practicing today, um, coming off a stomach issue that, um, you know, we're just, making sure that he is fully recovered from. I don't want this thing to linger. I want to make sure he's getting fully hydrated and ready to go and getting his weight back. He lost some pretty significant weight through the process. Um, so I'll make sure we get him back. Um, some other news of notes. I, mean, I haven't talked to you guys in a while. Jalen Cope Fitzpatrick is, uh, is going to be academically ineligible this fall. Uh, he'll remain with us. He's obviously out here at practice today. Um, so that was uh, a, a bit of sour news here coming into training camp that, that we're dealing with. Um, but on a positive note, Randall Telfair was back out today, which, which is great. I yeah, thought he looked good, thought he competed really well, thought he provided the really positive leadership for, for Bryce Dixon. Um, but all in all, a lot of those injured guys were back, you know, and we got really quality reps out of, out of a lot of them. Um, I mean, when you start talking about Leonard and the practice Leonard had. I mean, he was obviously very noticeable. Um, you start looking at, at um, Simmons up front, Walker up front. Those guys got quality reps. Uh, Josh Shot corner was back doing his thing. Looked great. Um, you know, the, probably the one guy who wasn't back to quite where we wanted him to be. We were hopeful was Lamar Dawson. We didn't get quite as much out of Lamar as we did out of the other other guys coming off the injury. Um, but I was I was really pleased you know Kenny Bigelow was really the only guy that did not practice today um, which was the goal as we all talked about in spring was making sure we got all these guys back healthy for training camp um, and for us when when we're able to go ones twos and threes which is what we were doing today I think is is invaluable for our development of our team um, you know we're developing young players um, our, our frontline starters don't have to take every rep um, we're keeping them fresh and getting them prepared for the first ball game, obviously four weeks away, but um, they don't have to take every rep of the practice. And when we're able to do pre-practice walkthroughs and we've got three different groups going, um, that's a good sign for us. Um, I thought some of the young guys really shined today. Obviously, Juju Smith, I thought, really made some pretty highlight plays. Um, down the field catches, looked very comfortable. Um, obviously, you saw Dory working on both sides of the ball today, which is not an easy thing to do. Andy was returning kicks in pre-practice, so quite a bit on his plate right now, but um, kind of lived up to what we thought. You know, he looked great at corner, and he did some really electric things with the ball in his hands um, on offense, and then, um, you know, he obviously caught the ball well in the return game. Um, some other guys that showed up, noticed Lamont Simmons, noticed Jonathan Lockett. Uh, the young old lineman all competed really well. You know, for Viani, this is the first time ever in his life he snapped a football. So there's going to be some growing pains for him there as well, snapping the ball. But I, I think we can continue to improve that. He's a really athletic guy. Um, so all in all, positive. Now, by no means are we perfect. Um, we've got a bunch of stuff we need to work on and can't wait to get to the tape and, and look at it and start making the corrections. Under Walker, Steven Yep. I, I, yeah, remiss leaving a couple of the last two guys out. But Andre Walker, you know, Andre's not 100% right now. Um, you probably could notice him limping some at times. I think some of that is, is truly, there's some soreness in there. I think some of that is, is dealing with it. He, he's not injured anymore, but it's understanding how to deal with, with that pain and that threshold of it. So. I think as a credit to Coach Drevno, we continue to push Andre. I think Andre tried to fight through some of it. Hopefully we get more out of him tomorrow. I thought Steven Mitchell just looked normal. Um, he was out there doing his thing. He looked very good. We did limit his reps some. And we, we didn't just go you know, all out with him. When Adoree went in, Adoree was really taking some of Steven's plays. And so that was the way we were able to minimize some of Steven's reps and, and get Adoree involved. 
uh, and George Farmer as well. Um, I, I think that probably the biggest thing that you noticed with George and, and Steven, neither of them had a knee brace on. They were both out just playing um, and they looked confident. I thought they got better as practice went on. And I think that's only going to improve as they get more comfortable being on the field. Coach, when you think about the depth and where you are now and where you need to be in four weeks, how, how positive are you that you'll get them? Well, I'm extremely positive. Um, I think that we've got a staff that understands how to develop players. We've been doing it for, for many years now. Um, we pride ourselves on the development of players. Um, you know, it, it's hard to say after day one um, exactly where we're at, but um, you know, I believe in our coaches. I believe in the work ethic of our players and, and their want to and their desire. Uh, I think we've got tremendous leadership on our team uh, that, that they provide um, a real kind of sense of guidance to our younger players of what it takes to prepare mentally, physically, and emotionally and come out and compete. Um, but it was a, you know, I think for us, the big thing today, it was a really competitive environment on today's practice. And, and that's all you can hope for. It was much more competitive today than it was ever in spring. One, you have more bodies. So it was competitive offense versus defense. But two, it was competitive at position groups. And, and guys know there's guys behind them that are, that are definitely physically capable of stepping in and playing, especially when they figure out what they're doing. And so it's motivating for the starters. It's motivating for, for the guys that they know they're going to get opportunities in training camp to compete. Um, and, and it goes without saying that they're going to get opportunities. And so for us, that's how you just keep developing the guys. And if you notice post-practice today, how many guys stuck around and worked on little details of things. And I think it's credit to our coaches. There's, there's specific stuff they wanted to work on right after practice, whether it was you know a technique, a fundamental, a play. Um, and a lot of guys got a lot of extra work done. I, I think that's a great sign. How long do you think Yvonne will be out of it? I have no idea. You know, I've, I, I've, when it comes to stuff like that, you know, I'm, I'm, I, I really lean on our doctors. We've got a world-class medical staff, and when they say, "Hey, he's good to go, coach," he'll be good to go. I, it's, Kevon's in a little different situation. You know, he's a guy who's played a lot of football. Uh, he obviously participated in, uh, in all of spring practice. Um, he's got a really good grasp of our scheme defensively. He's a highly competitive kid. And as I reminded the staff today, we, we don't play for four weeks. You know, we're not playing in four days. We don't play for four weeks. And so the, my big thing is I want to make sure that nothing's lingering with him. I want to make sure he's 100% healthy, ready to go. He feels strong. Um, and, and when that time comes and, and when the doctor says he's good to go, is when, when, we'll, when we'll turn him loose. Kevon's situation may be playing the Adore starting on defense. Um, you know, we went back and forth a little on it of exactly where he would spend the majority of his time. Um, you know, he got, I, I believe it was 15 plays or 16 plays on offense today. Um, and so that was, a, that's a pretty significant amount. And he was really you know, somewhat of a primary in all the plays. He wasn't just out there as a decoy doing different stuff. So we got a chance to see him getting some opportunities with the ball either in his hands or near him. Um, you know, we, we also got some of that in some of the meetings today as well. Um, so we're going to really take it day by day with Adoree. Um, again, we'll have to assess the film. You know, I don't know exactly how we did on defense today. But we've got, a, you know, with our young players, we've got decent depth in the secondary going right now. You know, like I said, I think Lockett had a nice day. Um, I noticed Lamont Simmons today, obviously Plattenberg, um, getting Josh Shaw back, um, you know, a healthy with three veteran safety. So. We're pretty comfortable there, and we're, we're relatively comfortable at the receiver spot. We've got we've got a good amount of bodies going there too. So, um, but again, so much of that is going to be day by day of just what we need, where we're headed, um, how we continue to respond. With Coach Fitzpatrick um, academically eligible, does that mean Bryce Dixon is definitely going to play this season? And would you move someone to that tight end spot to keep up the depth there? Well, like I said, I, I think Randall, you know, being a senior at that position, the, the veteran leadership he provides, his blocking ability, uh, I think he'll be a really good weapon for us in the passing game. I think Bryce, you know, unless something crazy happens, he's shown me in one day that he's going to be plenty good enough to play for us this fall. To what degree and what percentage of his role will be is going to be determined over the next few weeks. And so I would imagine he's going to play. And Chris Wilson, from the development of the end of last season through spring practice to the off season of really preparing to play tight end is another really adequate guy at that position. So I think we have three very capable players. 
Um, also, we have two really versatile fullbacks in Soma Vanuku and Jaleel Pinner. And those guys, we haven't gotten into all of our offense, obviously. This is day one. Those guys are going to provide us some versatility as well. So when you add up the three tight ends, a couple fullbacks, I think we've got enough versatility um, that, that we can run the offense we think we, we're capable of running. It looks like on the offensive line, Toa and Max are going to back to Yeah, center. we're just trying to find versatility. You know, and like I said, going in, we're trying to find the best five with continuity that are going to give us the best chance to perform at a high level. And so we really we thought about moving Toa to center some in spring. We just didn't feel it was probably fair to him to play multiple positions as a as a guy who's supposed to be a senior in high school in spring practice. So we waited till till training camp, and, and he, he did some nice stuff there. Obviously, Viani's also getting work there as well. Um, but we want to find the right five, and then we want to find the next three or four that can be really quality, versatile backups for us. And so, again, this is day one. Uh, we're we're in helmets and. and underwear basically you know so we got a you know we got a long way to go but we're just giving guys opportunities putting stuff on film um, you know a lot of a lot of what we're doing right now there's a lot of contingency planning going you're always trying to think ahead you know max turk can can roll his ankle the second play of the season and who's going to go play center for us and so we're starting to think about a lot of those things right now i uh, just felt totally, totally normal I didn't even think about it. I can be honest with you. I had a, had a lot of notes and a million things going on here. And I uh, just wanted to make sure the guys were prepared, ready to go. Um, it just felt normal, and quite honestly. I, I think the anticipation of practice really came in spring, and now it was just time to go to work, and it just felt normal to me. How did uh, Max Brown look tonight, especially compared to how he played in spring? Uh, Max looked, looked really a lot more athletic than I remember in spring. He looked stronger. I thought he delivered the ball with good arm strength and, and accuracy. I think he and Cody both, you know, the first day the defense is always jacked up and jarred up and ready to go. Um, but, but both those guys, the, the, as we continue to grow at that position, our ability to anticipate throws is really going to be the key to our success in the passing game because they're both plenty talented enough physically. Um, they can throw the ball with, with plenty enough arm strength. They throw it accurately. Um, they're both really, you know, they work at their craft, they study our offense, they, they've got great minds, they're smart guys. It's putting everything together now, and that's what training camp's for. Uh, I know we're all excited about it, and I just got done visiting with Cody about it. And so I think both Max and Cody, I think, are, are going to continue to make really good strides here as the days keep coming and as they start to understand how our plays really mesh with some of the defenses that we're seeing so they can start to anticipate some of those throws because it's difficult. You're going against our defensive front and we're not in pads, they're coming. You know, it's, it's hard to block those guys. You know, Leonard and Claude and Antoine and Delvon and Scott Starr and JR, they're coming. And so you, you have to have great anticipation pre-snap of understanding what's going on, trusting your reads and letting it rip. We're next to one last about question. 50, 50 reps. It's just about, yeah, and, and really all three of them got just about the same amount of reps when you, when you throw Jalen Green into it. So that, that's the point for us in training camp. For me, uh, these first five days, so much is developing our team because everybody's going to have a role. Everybody's going to uh, play to our success in the fall, um, whether you're a frontline starter, you're a backup, or you're a scout team guy that's trying to give looks to our offense or defense. This is our chance to really coach everybody on those things. And so we really try to give everybody as many reps as we can, and, and that's what happened.